Hey, hey, fans, welcome to episode 159 of Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast. As you all know, we are a Paul McCartney talk show, mainly dealing with the solo career of Paul McCartney. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Tom Hunyadi, and hopefully you know me from my other show, Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. And I'm joined by my partner in crime, a backwards traveler. He's Andy Nichols. Andy, what's going on, brother? Hey, Thomas. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Excited. Uh, booked the flight to, to Jersey and, uh, you know, looking forward to having a having a good time. Woke up this morning. morning. <laughs> 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 oh, speaking of that, speaking <laughs> of that, so so today's what, the 6th? The what, what's today? Today's the 6th, six, six. March 6th. Yeah, so we, we just finished uh, the last episode of The Sopranos uh, last night. Made in America? Oh, you did Made in America? Yeah, Made in America, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we 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 knocked it out relatively You got quick. through it pretty, you got it, because like, I remember talking to you yeah. maybe like, um, two months ago yeah. and you guys were in season three yeah yeah um, so we got this yeah picked this yeah got this a couple months ago um it's, a, is, it's, uh, it's crazy how affordable the thing is now the oh yeah the this is the whole series a whole, right, whole series how much 100 bucks 80 dollars on blu-ray 80 bucks back in the day those, the, whole the individual season the individual season 100 bucks 100 dollars 15 yes. years ago crazy yes yeah. Um, so, you know, I, you know, this is my first time watching it all the way through at once. So, you know, I've seen all the seasons. Right, you know, right. But to watch it all the way through straight. Right. But to watch it all the way through. And this is the first time my wife's seen all of them. So she really <laughs> enjoyed the show, too, which was great. You know, we would laugh at, I mean, the, the you know, the how, you know, they would say regat, you know, instead of ricotta. <laughs> it's just, you know, you don't say ricotta. Metagons say ricotta. It's ricotta. It, you know, yeah. You don't say, yeah, you got the manicot, you know, it's just, no. <laughs> and, and gravy, Rosie, you know, get your money good. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And gravy, you know, no one, no, you know, we don't say gravy. Well, when you, when you, <laughs> listen, when I'm half, I'm half Italian. Okay. We don't yeah. say gravy. We say sauce. Yeah. It's just, you right. know, um, when you come to Jersey, I'm going to take you over there to the gas station where uncle Phil got popped. Bye bye grandpa. Ah. Boom! It's about <laughs> ten minutes. It's right ten minutes from my house. I'll show you, and it's still the same. Everything. It's everything's still there. I'll Very cool. Give, Very give cool. you a little guided Sopranos tour when you get to Jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, we loved it. We loved watching it together. So it it was a lot of fun. Uh, the the two of the Blu-rays had uh, a few issues. Um, so only two episodes had little glitches that where we had to skip mm. over it, unfortunately. But. Um, we have yeah. HBO Max, right? You could have watched them on there. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, we already pay for 20 apps as it is already. We don't need another stinking app. You, oh, you, you know? don't have HBO Max? No, no. Oh, I thought you did. Okay. No, no. So, but uh, but yeah, a lot of fun. So now when we're done here, I'm going to go pick up the, uh, the the movie, the prequel film. The ah, Saints the of the Saints yes. of New York. So, Very, let me know what you think about that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll watch that. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully so do you understand do you understand the ending now or are you one of those fans where or did your wife say what the hell just happened like, you know does, does she get it yeah no i get i mean no that's the, the beauty about it is you know you bring you leave it up to your own imagination what happened you know um i think it was last year he had david chase had came out and said what happened what actually happened to to tony and um you know he yeah, I'm not going to say it because I, you know, if anybody who hasn't seen The Sopranos, which I would hope, you know, many people have seen it by now, you know, Come but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I was fine. I know a lot of people were, were pissed off about it. Um, I know it's, it, it, it um, you know, the thing is about, you know, the song Don't Stop Believing was it's, it's always been a popular song. Okay. But I mean, it just elevated that song to like almost oh. icon status. You know what it, I mean? But it already was. It already was, I think, well, by the time yeah. that came out in 2007. I mean, but it really propelled over the last, what, 15 oh, years ago? It's that was like, now? it was like, listen, well, it, it just brought a whole new generation to that song, you know? Oh, my God. It almost kind of like what, what Wayne's World did with Bohemian Rhapsody, you know? Very much it's, so. It now. Was, yeah, that it was, was almost a, like uh, you discover that song, and then it's just, it's like your song. But then now everybody else knows the song thanks to Wayne's World, you know. And it's just, I thought it was a great choice. I know that um, tying in some recent news, I know that uh, Stephen Van Zandt did not want to use right. that song. 
he wanted to use a Procol Harum song called The Devil Came From Kansas, which obviously uh, is a very, very deep cut. But if you right. listen, it's on a salty dog. Um, right. Hint, hint, David Gargolino, who just got, just got that album. I know he is enjoying it. Um, it would work for that scene, but obviously Don't Stop Believing is so iconic. And it right. worked so well for that scene. Um, you could, you know, how could you go wrong? Chase overruling Van Zandt. But, um, yeah, I still don't get tired of watching that scene, really. Members only, right. guy with the members only jacket, the onion rings. Yes. Car, uh, Meadow parking the car. You're like, oh, my God, park this car already. I know. <laughs> You know, you, oh got the, you got the guys sitting at the bar, kind of like peeping mm-hmm. over. You got the, you know, two black people, two black kids oh. walking in. You know, yeah. You know, every time you hear that jingle from the door open, you know, you got Tony, you know, you know, looking at the door, seeing who the hell, who the hell it is. You know, yep. hey, listen, a lot of foreshadowing that last season. Tony and Bacala sitting on the boat. You probably never yes. hear it when it's coming, right? Mm. Boom, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 assassination scenes in in the in there, are, you know, and I really remember what happened with, with Christopher. I just couldn't remember Whoa. when it happened. You Whoa, know what I mean? Man. I forgot yeah. completely because I hadn't watched this this last season since I would say probably 2008 was the last time. Wow, it's a long time ago. Yeah, so it's been a long time. So yeah, I'm definitely glad yeah. that uh, we 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 uh, revisited. You know, the whole and it's series. really, it's really, their cell phones are in it, but they're pre-smartphone. So it's funny. <laughs> they, all have the, they all have the flip phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freaking phones. We were better off years ago. Throw the thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. We, yeah, we enjoyed that as well. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we could maybe do a sub two leg Sopranos podcast. I could talk for, <laughs> for hours about that. Probably. But if you didn't, if you didn't know that um, during the pandemic, um, what's uh, Michael Imperioli and Stephen Stripper. Yes, Bacala they did a show. Right, yeah. They yeah. started one talking Sopranos, and yeah. they just finished it. They just they, they did one over every episode. Um, right. and they just finished it a few months ago. All eighty six, the eighty six shows. Um, right. They covered it. So I, you know, it's if anybody ever wants to kind of go into a Sopranos podcast, check out those guys because I mean, that's <laughs> that's them. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 So well done, you know, David Chase. I mean, he brought on some, you know, a great team of writers and directors, uh, oh. you know, dialogue was, has always been stellar um, in that show and the acting is great as well. You know, and so. many, many, many of those writers and producers and actors are on one of my new favorite shows, which is on CBS Blue Bloods. So they're kind of, Blue Bloods. Yes, they're, that's right. They're, Bobby's they're, on they're, that one, right? He is. Bacala. He is. Bobby, yeah. Bacala is on Blue Bloods. Um, you know, Terrence Winter, one of the writers of The Sopranos, he's a, he's a writer for Blue Bloods. So this is a little two legs plug for Blue Bloods either. Check that show out. That is one of the best on television, bar none. 12 seasons right. running long. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's just, yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, you know, today's show, we're going to do a, a fan Q&A, which is something I've been wanting to do for a while now. And uh, we'll finally, uh, you know, we got a bunch of questions here and uh, we're going to get to those in a few minutes. But uh, we're going to talk a little news here first, um, because we haven't really done talked much news lately. There, I mean, there hasn't really been much. Well, and then it's, it's funny. You no, know, it's funny, though, because then it all happens all at once, you know, so you can't just, you know, space it all out. But uh, anyways, nah, I'm the true Mac of yeah. fashion, it just is, hey, I'm at, I'm back and I'm going to throw it all at you. So go right ahead, partner. <laughs> go right beans. ahead. So, so we know we have a record store day coming April 23rd, I believe. And when that was first being announced, there was also being mentioned that there was going to be a woman and wives 12 inch uh, single that was only going to be in the UK, which, you know, again, I mean, that's fine. They have their right to, you know, know, release it wherever they want to. Um, However, I'm kind of glad that this, this news was, was wrong or it was changed because now, on June 18th, I guess there's going to be a second record store day. And that's when we're going to get this woman and a wives 12 inch single and uh, only 3000 worldwide. And, but the big news is, is that it's, it's being named record store days song of the year. This is the very first time something like this has happened uh, that we're going to have like a, a song of the year. And, you know, my big concern about this is, is it's only 3000 copies. This, this single was not going to need any help selling out. 
You know what I mean? So no, now my good concern it's is, limited, is it's now, limited anyway, right? Right, it's limited anyways. But now my, my big concern is, is like fans of Record Store Day who aren't necessarily Paul fans, they're going to go after this now as mm. well. You know what I mean? Just the just your average collector, and and, and that's going to take away from you know the the McCartney fans. You know, so, right? Because they're going to just they're going to go seek it out. Who normally they wouldn't even they wouldn't be seeking they, it. Paul's they would give it the time of the day, but now because no. of this, you know. Song this, of the song of the year. That's thing. gonna that's gonna that's gonna make it uh, even you know a scarce record even more scarce. Right, right. So, but you know, I I I don't doubt that you know we'll be able to get one. You know, again, I'll be in line. You know, early. My wife and I will be in line <laughs> early in the morning. You know, hopefully to to grab one. But you know, again, um, you know, right around that three thousand range, it's usually you know stores will get it. You know, especially the, the stores that I have out here, I don't think. Oh, you know, I'll, we'll have a problem. Have now, will you yeah. just will you do? Um, was that would, would that be an in groove or would that be a? Um, do you? Oh, do Zia, it, Zia. Oh, yeah, the Zia. Both will have it. I don't doubt right. it. Right. Yeah. But do you always go to the same store, or do you just go to? Yes. Z, do you go to? Z, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I won't say which one because you know. <laughs> somebody you else know. is gonna get it. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, so you got to keep some of the secrets uh, a secret. You know, yes, close to so, the best. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we got that to look forward to. Um, for you uh, McCartney fans that love to go see uh, McCartney live, he added a second Fenway show, and this is uh, going to be June eighth. So now it's the seventh and the eighth, I believe, in um, Boston for that show. Yeah, for Boston. Yeah, Boston Fenway. So that uh, I'm sure there's going to be more shows added. I don't doubt. And then he's also can. It's also officially announced that he is going to be doing the Glastonbury uh, show as well. Yes. You know, which he was supposed yeah, he, to do two years ago. Yeah, he, and I know that's been a big. I posted on his social media that he's doing Glastonbury. Um, he also, I don't know if you saw this too, Tom. He posted, you know, um, dream set list. Did you see that post? He was like, oh, no. you know. Yeah, he go. He goes. You know, would you? What would you? What would, you, what would your dream set list be? And they put together like a Spotify playlist of like what their favorites are. I didn't mm -hmm. check it out, but it was just you know it was interesting to see that they were posing a set list, dream set list question, on his official social media. Whether that's going to mean a drastic change in the set list, who knows? I hope it does. Christ, it's been over two years. It should be exactly. Exactly. And that's not enough to freshen up. I don't know what is. <laughs> And also, you know, our uh, last show a couple of weeks ago, we we had uh, who we had we had Adrian Sinclair along with Owen Ling, and yep. we, you know, with the Live and Let Die show, we also talked about a little bit about the McCartney Legacy uh, book. Now, a couple of days after they had that episode dropped, they finally announced that it's available for pre-order. So now you can go on Amazon and you can uh, pre-order. Um, Pre-order the book. Now, uh, I'm going to grab another book here because of the fact that, you know, after the after we recorded that episode, Andy, we, you know, we, we chatted for like about another hour and a half. And, um, you know, we were just talking about the release of the McCartney um, McCartney Legacy book. And, you know, and he's just giving us a little, Adrian was just giving us a little more detail on it, saying it's just going to be your average size book. You know, it's not going to be some, you know. Not going to be like this? Know, it's not going to be like the you know the eight arms to hold you book you know it's they wanted it to 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 be affordable for everybody which was cool and and that's the thing because they have a publisher they can they can do that right you know a lot yeah. of times when you see these self published books you know the 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 price is a little bit more because it, you know all you know their money is is what's going into it right you know they're put right. a lot of the time so they want to get that you know a lot of, as much as that return uh, money back as as, as back possible on, on their investment yeah, yeah. Exactly. So um, that's pretty cool. So I think it's on pre-order for like $35, which is very reasonable. Very, that's, very, that's reasonable. For a hardcover book that's going to be, I think it was like over 800 pages or something like oh. that. I can't remember. Yeah, we're, you know. I mean, we're, I would I would compare that to TuneIn. You know, TuneIn was yeah. an exhaustive, you know, well, obviously researched book. Right. And the, the gold standard and the standard edition of that book was probably, you know, the same amount of money, $25, $30, $35. So the McCartney legacy, I kind of, that's, this is, I'm comparing it to them. I compare it to tune in, 
in terms of the right. quality of, of the of the writing and the research. So, thirty five dollars yes. for a hardcover copy that's that's a steal. Yeah, yeah. So I I pre-ordered my copy. Um, you know, hopefully maybe when we post this episode, we'll put the link to that or to their to, their, uh, to that to Amazon uh, page again, and uh, you know check it out. This is I I really believe this from the bottom of my heart because you know from talking with Adrian Sinclair for years, and and you know and talking with with Alan Cozen for years that this is really going to be the McCartney book that we've all been craving it. for this is this is yeah this is like again like the tune in this is a lewison style book that everybody is going to want to read and i hope everybody supports them because Absolutely. yes they're, con they're they're contracted to the two volumes and hopefully if these bo books do well it'll encourage them to continue I mean, the series going when we when we spoke to adrian and owen adrian said that uh he was currently researching he was even though we were talking about 73 he was yeah. knee deep into 78 79 period right. so right. he's knee deep in kind of you know mccartney reacting to punk and doing back to yes. the egg and, and and kind of thing so he's knee deep in that right now for for the second volume and um, I really wish I hope for three, I hope for four volumes. I mean, I mean, right. so at least, at least a third, um, you know, because of course, you know, the, what McCartney does later in the eighties and to the end, and, and we talked about this a little bit in the nineties, there, there isn't as much to probably talk about in terms of his solo out, but I mean, obviously he was incredibly productive in the nineties with the anthology right. and the fireman stuff and the Liverpool Autorio. But, um, if they're going to just talk about his proper recording career, um, you know, maybe, maybe it. Maybe it, maybe they sum it all up in three volumes. Does it need a fourth one? Um, I think there's a case can be made either side, really. Well, you know, yeah, I think there could be a case can be made for five volumes. You know, maybe six. I mean, like you like you say. I mean, the work is there. You know, I mean, not all of it was released as we know in the '80s, but I mean, the work is there. No, but I, and, I I would hope that the publishers really give them uh, hopefully this this book does so well that they they sign they can agree, you know agree to terms for a third volume um you know, you know lewis has right. got you know three a, a three book deal I, I think mccartney's solo career warrants at least three right. you know if we're gonna if we're gonna cover this if we're gonna cover his career in every aspect of every detail which they're gonna do then it needs at least three volumes okay we're talking about 50 mm -hmm. years here you know right. i know i know that um lewison's only Lewison's only going up until I think seventy six. But his book, I think, when they ever legal when they legally dissolved these, his book, I from what I've read, I think his book is only going to go up until seventy six when they legally stopped, yeah. you know, being tied together. That's three books covering basically from the fifties to the middle of the seventies. We're talking fifty two years of a solo career here, so I, I really hope we get multiple volumes. I really do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, head over to Amazon, type in McCartney Legacy and uh, you know, help them out. I mean, the the response to the show was 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 great and you know, Adrian reached out to me a couple of days ago and saying, you know, you know, again, thanks and uh, you know, they're they're I think they're like the number two uh two book right now on Amazon. Um, oh. so Beatles related book on Amazon. So that's great. Excellent. Excellent. Good luck, fellas. Yes. yes, absolutely. Now, Andy, you, my friend, you, uh, got to see Elton John again for, for the second time on this, uh, this l final leg of the tour. How was it? Yeah. Well, yeah, two times in a week. And, um, it was, you know, having never seen Elton John before, even though I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan, I have just about all of his records. Um, First time was at Madison Square Garden uh, in, in the February, and that was just incredible. Seats were really good. They were the 100 section of the garden, so I was able to look right in. Great seats with my friends. And then uh, kind of impromptu, kind of <laughs> scored tickets the week, the next week, just a few days ago, to see him 15th row at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. And wow. that was absolutely incredible. Now, there's some songs that I'm really not hugely fans of a fan of in his set list. Cause it's mostly, it's mainly, it's mainly the hits. You got one deep cut in this set list, but even close like songs like Benny and the jets, I'm not a fan of, I, I really, I cannot stand crocodile rock. Um, yeah. So, you know, I really don't, but uh, you know, some of the other songs, some of the eighties, like, you know, sad songs. Okay. But to be that close, even the subpar songs were like, great because you were that close i have to say that was so that was incredible um 
you know, it was it was it's 74 years old. He's he still obviously his voice is not the same for the last 30 years, but he still has the power. The power, you know, he's you know he's you know two years off. His voice is still stronger right. than ever. Um, the band is incredible. Davy Johnstone, you know, his original guitar, one of his, you know, there. Nigel Olson, these guys he's played with for 50, over 50 years. Right. Um, Ray Cooper on percussion. I mean, very tight band to play with. To play with, and it was absolutely incredible life-changing in many ways to see a singer that uh, and an artist who i've admired so much most of my life you know to see funeral for a friend live and in person up close that was if that was the only song he did i would have been happy with that i mean the build-up the fog machines the smoke the lightning it was like you're gonna go in november you're you'll you'll see it for yourself but it's I mean, it was absolutely incredible, uh, and thank God I got a chance to see him before he before he didn't really tour. He's not as prolific as McCartney, right? Um, in terms of touring, like he tours a lot, but his stops over the last fifteen years in the New York area have been very intermittent. Like he's done a few shows, but not like four or five nights in a row. Like McCartney did, like McCartney's done four nights at Madison Square yeah. Garden, like multiple times. Elton's only done like one or two nights and. You know, over the last 15 years, and I haven't really had it. I just didn't have the opportunities to see him, like a Mc, obviously, like a McCartney. But um, yeah, it was it was worth every penny, and uh, it's, it's you know good for him for calling it a career. But he could still keep going. I mean, what a great show! And was that a coffee mug uh, from the show too? I saw it you. Cer- with? It certainly is. <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly Excellent. is. Same set list as as the the week prior. Same, same exact set list. His story. I mean, obviously, he didn't speak. He, he had, you know, he wasn't so. It wasn't such like a thing where he just said the same exact thing. His banter was different in between each show. Uh, he talked right. about like how, you know, how he talked about how he played at um, Madison, obviously Madison Square Garden, seventy something times, you know, and of course, like he talked about playing there with Lennon in, in seventy four, and like I just got goosebumps, you know, on my neck thinking, like, hearing him talk about that and being in that same venue. You know, and then mm. showing the little, the little very clip of video footage of him and Lynn together on the stage, along the backdrop. Um, you know, it was just, it was so moving to to hear him talk about his life and his memories, and it kind of all, it kind of all comes to a head at the end. I'm not going to give it away, but at the end, for for Goodbye Yellowbrook Road, there's like a slideshow of his life, and that's when you see like the footage of Lennon and stuff, and it's, right, right. it's, it's, it's so, it's so moving, it's so moving. So, uh, you know, good luck, Elton, and. If you haven't seen it, please go see it because it's uh, absolutely incredible. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, he's just one of those artists that you just, you know, you took for granted. You're always expecting them to be there. And then now it's finally this is it, you know, and you're like, and now you're kicking yourself in the ass because you waited, you know, to see him, you know, if you hadn't seen him yet, like, like, you know, like we hadn't, you know. So, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, Hearing your yeah. hearing your comments uh, from these last two shows is really is really exciting me to to go see oh. him live. Yeah, you. Know? you and he still you, sounds he, good. He sound and he say yeah, tell me he doesn't have the he doesn't have the range obviously or the register to go high anymore. But like, you know, burn down the mission ki- just kills it. I mean, all these songs he just he just kills it. And some of the songs have like newer arrangements to it. Like he does a really like really cool rendition of Rocket Man. Okay, even though you've heard it a thousand times. Some like the renditions that he does, you know, these arrangements that he does in a live setting is makes it even better. So okay. I, you'll you'll have a great time when you go. Just make, you know, make sure you make sure you and the missus score good tickets for this one. When yes. You go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Very cool. All right, partner. Ready for some right. questions. Q&A time. Q and A time. So yeah, I've got some interesting ones here, and I'll just come out right now and say, I mean, depending on how long these these questions take for ans- us to answer, will determine how many we get through. So if I hadn't get, didn't get to your question, we will save it for for another another time, and uh, hopefully hopefully this goes well. I <laughs> and, think we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll knock yeah. them down quick. Yeah. Okay. So first one is from uh, Serge. Who's been a who's been a fan for for a while, and um, you know he'll say he'll, he'll message me from time to time and uh, sending me uh, videos of McCartney and and whatnot. So he sent me this question, and uh, here we go. 
What direction would Paul's music have taken if he had a solo career through the 70s, then in the 80s started Wings? So almost kind of like a vice versa type thing. How do you think Paul's music, you know, you know, what path would Paul's music have taken if he was a solo artist first in the 70s and then, you know, came up with a band in, in the 80s, you know, Wings in the 80s? So what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, um, interesting question. I don't, my gut tells me that it would, they would not have been su as successful. Hmm. Um, because uh, for a lot of different reasons, um, the video age, uh, the, the, the ever changing, I mean, what would have been the band in the eighties? I mean, the right. rings changed yeah. five, five or six times in the seventies. So right. what band would it have been in the eighties? Would it have been 71 to 73 wings? Would it have been 75? No. What, yeah. what, what version yeah. would it have been? Now, what version of the band would have been most successful in the 80s? I think it's fair to say that that would have been the Wings Over America lineup version of Wings. If anything, if any lineup had the commercial ability to have staying power, say, in the 1980s, right. with, the, with the ability to make um, hits, especially in a video age, maybe that's the maybe that's the 75, 76 version of Wings. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the final lineup of Wings. Um you know, when they were kind of, I mean, half of Back to the Egg got a video out them anyway, so that maybe maybe a case could be made that it could have been the Lawrence Schuber, uh, you know, um, final lineup of wings there to do that, you know, to, with Paul. I don't I don't know. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Well, I mean, I don't know if he would have had any, I mean, obviously I don't think he would have had any of the members in, in this 80s wings lineup, you know, if that's, you know, then that, they, that he had in the 70s, it would have been a completely right. different band. Um, now, how his music would have been in the 70s, I think, you know, I think he would have been successful either way if, if he was a solo act or if, if he was a true, with wings. Like a, just a, a, a true, true solo, solo artist, right, no yeah. band, yeah. He's gonna have to, yeah. He would have been successful either way, band or no band. Right. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, can see him, you know, being like a just, you know, listen. James Taylor had a lot of success as a, you know, the singer songwriter yeah. type thing. You know, I would, I could see that. I could see him having like a backup band, like a Crazy Horse, like Neil Young had, mm -hmm. you know, in the in the in the in the seventies. Um, but it wouldn't have been the. You know, yeah, I mean, it was really Paul dominated those those wings years, but I wouldn't have seen you wouldn't see any like co writes or anything like that with uh, with anybody no. that he would have had, you know, in, in the seventies. It would have been all pure, you know, Paul and or Linda McCartney written songs. Right. You know? I think the interesting part of Serge's question there is the eighties aspect of it because we all Paul was as talked about on a previous show that we did. <clears throat> He was at his commercial like hottest peak there in the, in the, in the early right. 70s. So Paul would have been as successful on his own with the band in the 70s solo. It would have, if he had a band backing him in the 80s, you know, touring. You know, what would he have been more successful? Um, I mean, you know, that's that's really become the question in my opinion. And right. uh, I, I think I think he would have been I think he would have been as successful. In the 1980s, in terms of how he did as a performer, you know, having a hit with No More Lonely Nights, having it, having a hit, you know, having a hit, a, a decent hit album, Flowers in the Dark. I don't think he would have done any better in the 80s, the band backing him than he did already. Okay. You know, yeah, and that's the thing. Now, would he would it, would it be a super band? Would would he have names in that band during the eighties, or would it be just like him and a bunch of you know just, pieces from just, other bands? You know what bands, I mean? That's that, that that's the thing. You know, wasn't and, his wasn't it wasn't his style to draft superstars into a band? Right, he was never he's, right. he was never into that. So yeah. it wouldn't have know, been a traveling Wilburys style band. No, you know. No, um, and, and and I think the course of the music would have changed. You you probably wouldn't have seen as many rockers, um, you know, in that band like you did, like you got from Paul in the seventies. You know, I don't think you would have seen. I think it would have been a whole different, complete style, different style band than than well, take, it was, would have been. Take the you know? take the band that he assembled for some of the Broad Street songs, right? So like, right, um, Dave Edmonds, Dave and Edmonds. Those guys. Yeah, you know, and they use it for like um, no values and not such a bad right. boy. That could have been like a band that he could have maybe gone out and because they were like well-known musicians, but they were not mega stars, right? So right. it kind of, his concept of what he wanted Wings to be, kind of it kind of carries through those to that 1980s period. Just for example, just in that Broad Street thing by using kind of studio 
good mu- musicians, but not really superstars. So I think I think yeah. you, you see the results. If he had a 1980s band, you see what those are. Watch Rock Broad Street. You know, watch, listen to those songs. You know, it's not a it's Paul McCartney with a backing band. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it would have been a completely different uh, kind of band than it would have been, you know, with Wings, especially if he did that in the '80s. So, yeah. 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 Good question. Um, yep. Yeah, thank you, Serge. Uh, this is from our our buddy Harry. Um, Harry, myself, and another friend Don. We do the Wings Collectors there on uh, wow. on Instagram. So so check that out. Um, Harry's question is, uh, do you think Paul should release live albums as part of an archive series similar to what Neil Young does? And um, I say absolutely. Um, He should do something like that. But just do it during the 70s because by the time you get to 89 to now, it's kind of, you know, the same show. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, you know... Yeah, you know, we we got those live albums already. You know, we got the you know the tripping live. We got Paul is live. You know, and 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 so on. Um, Good evening, but, New York um, City. Yeah, right exactly. So I would yeah. say yeah, but just do the '70s uh, uh, shows, not you know nothing. Not the eight, nothing. Uh, nothing. Eighty-nine to now. Yeah, no. Um, I'm gonna agree and slightly disagree with your take on that one. Um, I think he should absolutely do what Neil Young does. The Who also have done this as well. I think Springsteen has done well. I think everybody's individual experience of a live show, if they want to have that captured and documented for their own collection, should have every right to. Um, mm. in the who, you know, if you want, if you attended a Who show in two thousand and one or two, you could have bought that show right after. You could have bought that concert right because they they made the CD for you at the show. You got a soundboard recording of your unique show, and if it wasn't available there, you could order it from the website. So. Yes, the set lists from 89 have been redundant, but they've changed. I mean, we're talking, yeah. we're talking over 30 years ago. So, I mean, yes, there has, they haven't drastically changed, but but they have in a way. They've, they've, there's been a lots of different, I mean, think about all the various Beatles songs that have just been into, worked into the set list the last 10 years, the night before. You know, Yankee Stadium 2011, he opened up with the night before. So, I, mm-hmm. yes, they've been Beatle heavy, but they've also been like, uh, he's, he's tweaked them up enough to where I think that he should do the thing where yes, do an arc, do do a campaign where you can buy the show that you saw in Chicago or Wisconsin. That you want that's the show I went to. I want it. I want to have it. I do. I think every show should be available. Right. Yes. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Exactly. But the the unique thing about the the Neil Young stuff is is that he doesn't care. <laughs> you know what his audience is going to think. Um, about what songs he's going to do, you know, and the other he's unique like thing is, is that, yeah. And the other unique thing is, is that one show could be all acoustic, you know, one show well, could be all electric, you know, one show could be half and half, you know, so that we know was, that we, yeah. we know that, that Paulie does not do that. Paulie is right. a, like Elton is a, a total performer through and through and right. wants to deliver the, the best known stuff to an audience. And, that's very commendable. It's a, the diehard like us. We we get a little bit tired of that. But this goes back to when those guys were kids and being disappointed seeing their idols right. and not do the hits. So that's burned something in their head to say this. Is, certain artists do that. Billy Joel, Elton John, Paul McCartney. They're going to play the hits. Whereas a Neil Young and a Bob Dylan say, I don't care who's here. This is what I'm doing. Right. Like it or leave it. This is what. And that's very commendable too. I respect the hell out of that. I wish right. I wish our favorites would kind of channel a little of that sometimes, but they're so such showmen that they they just can't they can't switch off right. that entertainer hat. Well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, the Stones have been releasing officially live, you know, a lot of a lot of back uh, live show back catalog yeah. live stuff, you know, um, you know, Metallica. I think you can get their stuff online, you know. Mm-hmm. So a lot of a lot of acts have been offering up you know, live shows, which is just another great way, way to bring in more revenue. You know, and <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, is that Paul's team, they're recording these things already. You, so it's not like it's extra work. Every, every show that he right. does is being filmed and recorded. So if you're recording it already, what, how hard is it to just upload it and say, okay, here's pay $50 a year and you have access to download and stream, stream. all this yeah. stuff. All right. <laughs> Yeah, another good question yeah. there, Harry. He yeah. should do it, though. I agree. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, this is from uh, Tony. And, uh, you know, Tony has been a big supporter of the show. So thank you, Tony. Uh, his question is, um, again, another live, live related question. Besides Wings Over America, what are your favorite live albums to listen to? And, um, you know, for myself, you know, the live stuff is not, I, I don't necessarily seek it as much as maybe some people when, yeah, I own it all, but I don't necessarily, it's not like the first thing I'll grab when I'm like going on a road trip or something. If I want to listen to McCartney, you know, no, you won't grab a live album nine times out of 10. I won't, you know, but I tell you what, I mean, I'll tell you what, you know, now I'm mean, with that, with that full amoeba gig uh, that hmm. we got a few years back. Um, that is really uh, that was a great performance, a great show, you know, great yeah. song selections. Um, so I would probably, you know, say that that's risen to my second favorites. The you know, Amoeba live. Game? Yeah, the Amoeba, yeah. Hmm. Uh, is it officially or unofficial releases? I, I think it could be whatever you want it to be, yeah. Um. Yeah, not not counting not counting Wings Over America. I, I'll probably say Treating the Life Fantastic. Yeah. Um, hmm. As as a as for an official release, that album was such a and I talked about this when I did my little things we bought today segment the other night. Yeah, um, that was such an important um, live album document for me as a younger fan to hear all those flower songs, the Beatles songs live for the first time ever in like you know twenty years to hear them do Beatles songs. That's a pretty important live recording in my collection, and uh, I don't grab it as much. I do, but I, I, if I'm in the right mood and I you know. Fool on the Hill, maybe I'm amazed. You know, Sergeant Pepper, all everything's on there. Penny Lane, and it's, yeah. pe no, or no, no, Penny that, Lane. Or no, no, that was '93. That was that was '93. Um, yeah. but you know, to hear their their Beatles songs, but they're not they're not old retreads by this point. Like by 20 years later, he's still doing the same Beatles songs. They're they're right. if, if that makes any sense, they're new, they're fresh, newer Beatles songs, even though they're 20 right. years old. Um, <laughs> so that for me, it's tripping the life fantastic, hands down. And then if I'm going unofficially, I'm gonna go last flight with last wing show recording. Oh, sure. yeah, there you go, right? Yeah, and that, that's a that's a pretty good set list as well. That oh. last flight, you know, absolutely, and that and that goes with go, goes into to Harry's, uh, you know, the question, you know, about the the releasing those live shows. I mean, that would yeah. be, uh, and you know, a great addition to you know what I'm assuming they're going to do. You know, when all the back to the egg stuff finally clears, you know, all the legal stuff, and then we get, you know, the London Town back to the egg. They're going to squeeze in a, a you know a live. You know, a but 79 don't, live. Don't, you know. don't don't cheapen it. Like, don't drop a cut. See, they and they did this. They did this with McCartney. They took a couple of live tracks and put that on the two CD. See, they mm. took a couple. They took yes. every night from last now, and they put yes. that on That's there. Right. So yeah. they have snuck a few out on on these releases. So I hope they just release the show proper when they do that. Um, to you know, to your cousin's point, I mean, he texted us the other day, and it was a pretty sobering thought. It's been 20 months since the last archive right. release, which was Flaming Pie in the summer of 2020. That's quite a That's long right. time ago now. Yeah, yeah. So, very true, very true. Um, okay, this is from from Tom, and you know, Tom's been on with us. He, you know, he joined us for the uh, the bootleg show, and Tom um, yeah, Tom Brennan. And um, his question is, and I think this is more of a trivia question than a kind of like a you know our opinion question, <laughs> you know. But uh, and I have two two answers in mind. I think this will be suited for you because you know you know more of the stuff that he's done live. But the question is, what are the songs that Paul has never performed? live that he sang lead on with the Beatles. Now I know there's there's uh, Rocky Raccoon and um, Oh Darling. Those are the two I'm pretty sure. Now I don't think this is a big list either. No, it's not. Oh, I know well, for a fact one of them is Hold Me Tight with the Beatles. Okay, okay. Uh, he's never he's never done that live. That he sings lead on with the Beatles. He's never done live. Right. Yeah, Hold Me right. Tight with the Beatles, uh, O'Darrell and Rocky Raccoon, as you mentioned. Uh, Has he done Maxwell Silver Hammer live? No. Nope. Uh -uh. Okay, because yeah, we know um, we, we, he took, we, we got to take off uh, Why Don't We Do It in the Road uh, a few years back at the, yes. you know, so um, so that's what, that's four, right? That's four. 
I'm just I'm tempting about grabbing my Beatles CDs to go, but I'm gonna reach for them <laughs> to see what the hell they are. No, we gotta do no, we gotta try to just you know come up with it or on them, our own here. Or no, let me open up iTunes. It's it's right here. Let me cheat. Um uh it's probably gonna be earlier stuff. Definitely a uh, little while, while you know, yeah. So all right, hold on. Uh here we go. Now. Uh he's done till there was you. Um it won't be long, and all I've got to do are John songs. I'm not going to really count right. those. Uh, let's see here. Um, bah, 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 bah. He's done all of them. He's done all of them. Let's go to uh, let's go to this one here next. Here's a tale. Obviously, he's done. He's done off all the sun. Uh, Kansas City. He's done. Uh, what you ah? What you're doing? He's never done what, what you're you doing. doing. He's never done what you're you doing sure? live. Never. Hmm. Never. He's never done what you're doing live. Come on. Um, every little thing is a split. Uh, Long Tall Sally he's done, of course, as well. Yeah, right. Uh, bu- 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 um, let's take a look here. Hard Day's Night. Um, things We Said Today he's done. Uh, things We Say Up. Can't Buy Me Love he's done. He's done. Yeah, he's done. He's done and I love her. Uh, yeah, the, rest of this, the rest of this is John yeah. Heavy. So... Uh, let us go to uh, the next album. Uh, let's see. Um, b- 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 help. He's um, another girl. He's never done another girl. Hmm. He's never done another girl. I wish you. I wish you. He did the night before, which was awesome in 2011, but he's never done uh, another girl, which would be awesome to hear live. Right. Uh, yeah, he's done another girl from Help. You're gonna lose that girl. That's a John song anyway. Uh, b- b- um. Let's see. And this probably only, it's probably six or seven. It's definitely less yeah. than ten. It's definitely um, less than ten. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, another girl. You lose that girl. That's John. Um, let's see. You like me too much. That's George. Tell me what you see. That's John and Paul. Um, and they don't sing. Yeah, obviously he's done that. And then we get into Rubber Soul time. And oh, you won't see me. He's played. Right. Uh, he's played that before. Uh, Michelle, obviously. I'm looking through you. Yes, I think, I think he's he has played. done that. Yeah. I'm, yes, I'm looking and you won't you. see me. Played. I think he's done. That's there. That got played in 2004 at Glastonbury. Yeah. I think that got debuted at. Uh, then you get into Revolver, and pretty much from there, everything. Good day, everything sunshine. He's done. Yeah, everything. Got everything from that you, point I got on. Got to get you into my life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for no one. Right. Yeah, all those songs. Yeah, pretty much from '66 on is going to is going to slam dunk for the most part. But I think we've answered all your questions there, Tom. But if we left one out, please let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, we got one from the Queen here. Oh boy! Oh, cool. <laughs> and this kind of ties into uh, a little bit of the show we did with Ken Michaels uh, the other day that we'll we'll talk about later on in the show. But uh, what unreleased material would you like to finally see the light of day, whether as part of a box set or separate releases, and why? What you go first, partner? Well, uh, you know, there's just so much unreleased stuff i you know i would love to get the, the uh the press to play stripped down uh you know those demos from with the, this you know paul eric stewart and um uh, jerry Murata. you know i would love mm-hmm. to that to see the light of day you know whatever stuff is still out there from rupert the bear that hasn't uh um, yeah all that know, all that all the- the entire soundtrack that he that right. him and Wings did in '79. They did a whole soundtrack right. to, of Rupert music. Yeah, right, right. You know, love to love to you know that to see the light of day, and then obviously the the, the stuff that you know during the uh, the Phil Ramone sessions that hasn't got released. Uh, you know, the Lindianas and you know you know Return to Pepperland stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, all, all the all the any studio outtake stuff would be. Um, high on our list of stuff to come out that we wish to see to come out. Um, but I think I'd like I'd like to see some early earlier wing stuff kind of get work its way out, you know, in kind of a like a to another point like an archival like a wings kind of kind of like a wings archival live set like the best of like you know try to get ten the ten of the best professionally soundboarded recorded shows from seventy two to seventy six, mm. and especially really on those 
the early wings tours, like the ones, the one right. seventy three, and release those like in a, in a box set of live yeah. of live early wing, like an early wings. I mean, we got the we got that one disc in the in the um, yeah. you know the the, the ones box, the but, ones with Henry and Denny out of tune for right that the uh... right right <laughs> yeah, but that, that, I would love to see a really a true archival of wings uh, live pre seventy six, yeah. you know the 72, 73 wings. Period, and, okay. and incorporate yeah. incorporate inco that, and incorporate video into that. The backyard tape, the James Paul McCartney special. You know, wait, did we, did we get that on? Set? I can't remember now. Yeah, we got that. yeah, that's yeah. on the. Yeah, we got the. Yeah, we got. It's the, not, yeah, but it's not. It's not really cleaned up though. It's just. It's just kind of transferred. But yeah, look, wings live footage. You know, and 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 uh, wings box set from that those early tours is what I, was what I'd love to see. Hmm. The most. Okay. Cool. Um, our buddy Ed Crawford, who uh, you know, as a lot of people may know, was uh, joined us for our Broad Street, Broad Street show. Um, he's got you know an interesting one because we you know a lot of us are '80s fans, and he's obviously an '80s fan as well. Um, so his I think kind of um surrounds the the '80s type thing. It says um, let's assume that between 79 and 84 that the albums ranging from back to the egg to give my regards to broad street all sold 2 million plus. Okay. okay. In the U S let's also assume that each of them had at least two top 10 hits on each album. If that was the case, how different do you think Paul's set list would have been going through or going from the eighties onward? Do you think that the general public would appreciate Paul's solo work more if this were the case? I did appreciate if, that period more, no doubt. Right. Um, obviously if he has this kind of success that you're talking about, you know, 2 million, if he sold 2 million between uh, each, you know, on between back to the egg and broad street. And then, see, that's, that's a tricky question because, Com commercially, he did very well during that period. Okay, right. right. McCartney two sold well. It was a it was right. a number one. Tug of War was a number one. Pipes of Peace didn't do as well, but had say 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 on it. it still did very well. Broad Street right. has Number Lonely Nights. So this this is a very very successful period of McCartney's career. I know it's not considered classic like the seventies, but you know we all stand together comes out during this time period. He's he's very successful still between 1979 and 1984. So now he's not moving the kind of records that Ed's talking about, but I do agree that it would have changed the set list, you know, a lot, say in 89, 90, had he right. toured again, it, you would have seen more, you would have seen more stuff from tug of war, which I know you, you would have liked, and you would have yes. seen no, no only nights worked into a set list and potentially even press to play stuff. You would have seen that stuff worked into a set list, but right. He only goes up to 84, but yeah, I, I do think it would have, I think it would have changed drastically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to agree. I mean, let's say if, if the album pipes of peace was, a was a bigger, was a bigger hit. I mean, if it was a, let's say a top three, uh, I mean, album, he was talking in the U S I know he was talking in yeah, the U S in the U S yeah. Let's, let's say, you know, pipes of peace was a bigger, the album was a bigger hit here. Yeah. Maybe you would have seen a, a, a so bad, um, you know, live at, at one point, yeah. you know, maybe you would have seen say, something say, say. from, say 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 or or something from from broad street you know maybe a rocker or two um from broad street definitely no more lonely nights let's say no more lonely nights goes not no, the number one here in the states how now, could you not you know do how that, could you not that? No, this, it's yeah. a hypothetical because obviously after john paul wasn't touring right but could right. you imagine that, that given the success that say 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 had and john had not died having paul and michael jackson on doing that song together could you imagine what that would have looked like right just think about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wild. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have loved to have seen, you know, obviously, you know, Spies Like Us and, you know, I, you know, Once Upon a Long Ago. Yeah. I mean, we're creating oh, all that stuff to do for him to do live. Live, you know, big, big, very, very successful songs in other markets, right? But not so much... Here, although Spires Like Us was a top was his last top ten, right. you know, but these are these are songs that you know these are these are McCartney classics through and through. And right. you know, I don't know. Here's a question I'm gonna just kind of pose as a follow-up to that. I don't know. Like, we want to hear these songs live, but I think about like what would have hearing you know, would hearing Normal Lonely Nights live 
ruin your ruin your appreciation for like what if you know maybe he, maybe he couldn't deliver it as good live you know yeah, sometimes i maybe sometimes I, sometimes I think you know what maybe it's better left that these classic 80s productions are left as classic 80s productions and we don't hear yeah. some horrible out of tune version of you know yes i know i know yeah. like the thing you know what i'm saying <laughs> I don't know. It's just well, another... But yeah, but I think the '89 band was was strong enough, very t- and talented enough to 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 pull. Out. I think Robbie would have done a great job with the with the Gilmore guitar bit. Oh, you know, hands down. You yeah, know, Hamish and and you know would would have done a great. You know, Hamish and and, and Linda would have been done would have done great with you know with when Paul does I know vocals. and then they do the backing with the I know right. you know because you know, because they, Linda Linda's on it anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe, but I, I, I think they would have done a great job with it. I mean, I don't know if I, I, I maybe I don't have as much doubt as you do on that, but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think they could have done certainly, it well. Yeah, I think that it certainly would have been, I mean, just, it just, it's too bad given all the success that he had with those songs. I mean, and of course he did like the, the kind of the shows on television where he mimed these songs, but right, they're not live. Right. Like you, you know, you watch any of those shows like Friday night videos or he's on SNL or um, any of those shows on in the UK, you know, like he's, there's plenty of videos of him, you know, miming to once upon a long ago when he was promoting, promoting it, but he's not actually playing it, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and, and as a live, you go you know, YouTube it, you can find performances of him of the 80 of the, of the 89 band really, as he kind of was forming them in 87, 88, with Chris Witten and and Hamish, and they're doing once upon a long ago, like on UK television talk shows, but mm-hmm. they're just miming it. You know that they're just miming it. So I think that's right. the closest we'll ever get to seeing. Oh my God, it's live! <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're nice to look at. Right, right. Um, okay, let's go with uh, David, our, our friend Ghosty, who joined us for uh, ah, my fellow yeah, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Joined us for the uh, was the Choba versus uh, Run Double Run uh, episode. Yeah, and um, his question is: This is kind of interesting as well. Uh, he said, considering that much of Paul's early solo material was trashed by critics, whom history has since proven wrong, <laughs> would you like to see a book or a documentary where these same critics are asked to confront their own negative reviews <laughs> and acknowledge? I'll write I'll write yeah. it directly, please. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. Or Ghosty. explain I love the current that question. Positive, or, or explain the current positive reevaluation of albums like McCartney Ram or the uh, Another Day single. You, the one who said that Ram was the nadir of rock. Yeah, I'm calling you out. Yeah. What's your take on Ram now, you clown? <laughs> you know, this is almost kind of like. You know, when you get like an umpire or a ref, you know, in a game. Oh, see, they blow, he got my, they blow no, a call. Got my, 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 my blood is boiling now because I right. see, uh, see, Ghosty got me all fired up now because yeah. he, you know, he hit me where the heart hurts now because people that come after Paul it just make my blood boil. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Ghosty. Yeah. Let's go. You're not too far from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of like the you know the umps or the refs you know that blow a call and you know they they you know you're getting police escorts back to the hotel or whatever you know you'll never hear from you know you know but um but yeah that, that would be so interesting to kind of get a retrospective kind of thing you know you know then and now you know what were your thoughts then I mean obviously well the, you know we know what their thoughts were then. But, you know, it, as we all know, sometimes, you know, records grow on you, you know, sometimes you, you, you know, you, it just hits you a different way. And then all of a sudden you get it and it clicks, you know, and it, it happens. You know, so my problem with these critics is that they did not listen to these records objectively right. in the seventies when they came out, they listened to mm-hmm. it with the preconceived notions and agendas. And that's my problem with these, with the, with the critics at the time who panned, Red Rose Speedway and Ram and McCartney. They looked at it in the, and I, it, to their defense, I can kind of see why, because in the dust up of the Beatles thing, we know a whole lot more information now than we did that, than we knew back then. So in a way I kind of don't blame them because with, with, with foresight, we can see that, you know, that clearly wasn't the way and all they really had to go on was what they were looking at at the time. But um, right. that, that, that doesn't mean that doesn't excuse them for not, objectively listening to the record without their preconceived notions about 
okay. fall off from the Beatles. They, and they were tying it to the Beatles. And that was mistake number one and an egregious one. So, yeah, I'm right. You know, this is what this is what I wrote my paper on. So I'm a little, a little, I get a little de- defensive. You get a little worked up. Over there. I do, I do. I wrote, you know, right. I wrote a hundred pages on it. So yeah, I get fired up when this topic comes up. Right. No, that's Breathe. great. You're breathing. <laughs> Love it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna. This is the last one here. This is uh, okay. from Joseph. Okay, uh, as a as a Paul McCartney fan, we all we we always want another album. Okay, from Paul McCartney. However, what would you like more as a possible last album, a live album, the highlights, his best performances, his classics, an album like Chaos and Creation, or McCartney or an album like McCartney Three, where he does ninety percent of all the instruments and uh, and only has the band come in one or two songs. Um, you know, what would you, what would, so what would you like? I mean, I would, I'll tell you what, like, I would like, yeah, exactly. I would just like that. I would like an album of, of him doing most of the stuff, you know, with the producer or without a producer, doesn't matter. Um, that's what I would kind of like as a, as a last album. And he doesn't have to announce it as a last, I don't think we'll ever get an announcement. Hey, this is my last album or whatnot, but, but, um, you know, if he knows it, it's it's going to be his last album. He knows what he's going to want to do for it. I I, I think. Oh, no, obviously, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what? And and then and then that'll be done. But I I would really want something more personal, more raw, more you know, less production, and something more like the the first McCartney record. Not necessarily you know half realized ideas, you know fully realized ideas and whatnot, but kind of recorded more. Stripped you know, down. More, stripped down. Yeah, that's a, that's a perfect word. Stripped down. Yeah. All right. I think you and I will differ on this one a little bit. I, I would like to see him go out with a record kind of like uh, what New was, which had a lot of production and a lot of a lot of um, producers guiding Paul on what the sound should be, because I I think. Paul had so many yes men around him his whole life that just kind of tell him what he wants. And he really, and I think you guys are going to talk about this on your um, talk more talk coming up. I think tomorrow right. yeah. with the different producers and stuff. But I, I think I'd love to see him go out with an album like that, that has him, you know, cause obviously a DIY album, nobody would, nobody, everybody would love a DIY. But we, we have a DIY. We have that with McCartney three, right. You know, and the fact of the matter is that sooner or later, the last album is going to be here, right? It's, yeah. it's going to be 80. He's going to be 80 in three months. So yeah. the last album is going to be here sooner than later. And if, if, if there was going to be a last album, I'd like it to be with um, producers, contemporary producers that can challenge him uh, to make a, a contemporary sounding record that, that motivate him. Because sometimes he rests on his laurels and it's, it's just nice to have a breath of fresh air to say, why don't you try this differently? And with new, right. you had that with four different, with Epworth and Giles and, um, Ethan Johns, I forget the other, and David Upper. You had four different producers doing that, and I would love for him to close his career with a record of that style. Mm. Okay, no, fair enough. I mean, that's interesting. You know, I'm sure. It, it, I mean, I'm sure it'll be a great album, no matter what. <laughs> you know? Right. But I to mean, your point, I mean, you want to see a DIY, DIY thing. That's kind of what but McCartney not necess- is. But, but not necessarily a McCartney 4 or a 5. You know, it doesn't have to be that. I mean, I, I like the stuff that he does. I mean, yeah. I mean, Chaos and Creation would, could have almost been considered yeah. a McCartney, you know, a DIY, uh, yep. you know, album. You know, but I mean, obviously other people played on it, but, but I like that kind of record. I want, I also want him to, to, to be more, you know, lyrically but, challenging sometimes. And that you know, record, uh, that record, and that record has that, but also why? Because look at the right. producer of that record, Nigel Godrich, who pushed him. Right. Yeah. Not true. Nigel Godrich pushed him true. and there was friction. Right. There was friction with that record. Yeah. And yeah. It comes off, true. it comes off, it comes off in the songs to your, to your point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, again, I don't think he's going to say, come out and say, this is my last album or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I was kind of more stripped down, 
uh, like you said, I think would be cool if hey, listen, if he well, if if he knew this was going to be his last record. That's what I would. That's what I would like. Kind of like think he, you know a bookend. You know from McCartney yeah. to to the last. I don't record, think it, you know? I, I don't think that tale is going to be told that way. The last record right. is going to be the last record, whether whether he makes one more record, or three more right. records or five more records because right. we all know. I don't think there's any doubt in either of our minds that even at eighty something, he'll just produce something. You know, mm-hmm. and he'll just keep producing some kind of, you know, music. I don't think right. that, I don't doubt that. I mean, the man's going to, the man's going to be creating music until he's no longer. Recruiting. Oh yeah. Until he can, until he physically can't do it. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. I agree. Yeah. That's it. So what, um, we'll love you and I will love whatever it ends up being. I know that. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, cool. That was our very first, uh, fan Q and a, thank you everybody for, for sending the questions and, you know, hopefully in the future we'll, we'll, we'll do something like this again. And, uh, you know, so thank you once again, uh, Andy, anything you want to, uh, talk about before we, uh, sign off? Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Tom reached out to me with an idea to kind of grow our channel a little bit and, um, create some more, um, series on our channel. And he did that. He got the ball rolling by kind of coming up with a, a series called Things We Bought Today. And he sent me he did a video uh, about two weeks ago uh, showing what he got. And then I did my own version of that just the other night. Uh, and it's been a really nice little way to kind of just keep our content growing. Showing recent things, Tom Tom is like the, the buying machine. So he gets stuff like every other day. I, I have stuff from decades worth, which I haven't shown yet. But I, I'm not at the pace that Tom's at. But it's... Um, we, we've expanded the channel a little bit to to have series like that. And Tom's going to have another one coming up uh, next week. Um, he also has one on there um, called Legit or Counterfeit, which he did by showing his Brung to You Buy. And based on the feedback that we've got on that video, it looks like he does have a Fugazi of Brung to You Buy. Which it's I possible. Kind of yeah. Yeah. And, you, you know, know. I, was, I was basically, I was thinking about bringing that up again, too, because, you know, one of the, one of the, people that commented suggested i completely forgot to do this was to go in the uh the archive here take the take the uh the ram archive book out and yes. there's a picture of it in there and the right. press ring which you know is the the main concern is the exact right. same size of the one that i have you know it is? so a lot of people yeah it is yeah wow so you know and then the one that another you know maybe, friend maybe that- they maybe maybe there's a, maybe they have a bootleg one <laughs> right you <he's> said <saying. laughs> That's maybe the, exactly. Maybe, maybe the twenty-five year old somethings that put that 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 you know that package yes. instead of a ball. Maybe they got a they've got a, yeah, exactly. So I, <laughs> I again, I I do I do not doubt that the jacket is a fugue. I do not doubt that one bit. It's it's the actual vinyl that I'm still skeptical on. You know, so I'm not a hundred percent convinced that it's that it's a fake just yet. But but I get it. I get it. I mean, I, I finally someone did finally send me a picture of the smaller ring. Uh, yeah. You know, so I mean, I've seen it now. Um, but again, you know, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm still happy to have it because, again, oh, yeah. I never listened to it. You never, never listened, listened to it. And you heard you heard right. these little 30 second. Now right. hear this. this oh, yeah. <laughs> my. Now hear this. So, OK, it may, if it's fake or not whatever you still got something that's pretty as a mccartney collector you right. can appreciate you know and exactly that's a lot of exactly yeah so uh, then, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's all i wanted to just talk about was the, the expanding the channel into those little series right. that uh, we did in the last uh, few weeks yeah and, you know like andy said you know when this is posted there might uh there might have been one another one posted already um so we'll see about that but but yeah i'll, I'll be ready to do uh, you know another one here uh at, at any given time so but uh but thank you for all the, all the the views on that and the comments we really appreciate that and the, and the positive feedback i mean and i know people just love seeing that kind of thing I, mean, I think it's pretty cool um you know a couple people mentioned that oh i forgot all about that or i didn't know about that and then they went out and got it the next day you yeah know? so it's you know us collectors are crazy you know we just uh we you know we, we have to have have know, to have it yeah, but you have to have it. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so I'm glad you, I'm glad you did one. And I'm glad that the feedback from that was, was, was awesome. Yeah. So again, I, thank I, you. Everybody yeah, out there. No, thank you. I did. I would just, I wasn't even planning on doing it, but Tom was like, do one when you get a chance. And I got home that night. I'm like, okay, I'm going to just throw this together. And I didn't even know an hour before that I was going to do it, that I was going to do it. I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to grab this, 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 and this, and I'll just do it. Right. <laughs> 
but thank you thank you for right. inspiring me. yeah yeah and there's another there's another series that hopefully will get off the ground no pun intended uh very soon um and uh we'll we'll you know we'll, you'll you guys will see that when that pops up so um you know you can get get a hold of us you know we're on twitter facebook and instagram at two legs podcast uh please check out our youtube channel we're we're, we're continuing to grow thank you and we're we're getting close to that goal of 1000 subscribers we're really close we're we're just over 50 at at the the time of recording i think we're at 53 more to go before we hit mm -hmm. uh, our goal of 1k um and then like as we we talked about in the past we will do a 1000 subscriber contest uh, once we once we've reached that goal so again it's two legs a paul mccartney uh podcast andy just put up a new little um uh, banner up there so thank you for doing that partner it looks great and uh you can also email us at two legs podcast at gmail.com um i do want to talk about um our two appearances on the last two episodes of uh ken michael's uh radio uh, uh youtube channel and um what we a couple weeks ago we went on there and we talked about um what what was uh uh, Paul McCartney's peak. Um, and we had a great time talking about that. And then the mm. week later, week after that, we we went on and we talked about our three favorite unrele officially unreleased Paul McCartney tracks. So, so that was a great time hanging out with Ken Michaels uh, on his uh, channel, Ken Michaels Radio. So go over there, over there, check it out, and please subscribe. And uh, I'm sure Ken's going to be back on our show very soon. Um, to continue a series that we started uh, a while ago called A Friend Like You, which is going to talk about the songs that Paul McCartney worked on or gave away um, in the 80s and 90s. So it wouldn't be necessarily his main catalog uh, or canon, if you will. But uh, again, these are songs that, you know, he was gracious enough to, hey, somebody called him up. Hey, can you give me a song? Okay, sure. Here's uh, On the Wings of a Nightingale. There you oh. go. <laughs> wild yeah exactly so uh be on the lookout for that so that'll be uh part two of that series so uh again everybody we really appreciate you uh you know watching us listening to us however you partake in this show uh we really appreciate it so um everybody as always have a great day and a beautiful night take care peace <laughs>